right, so good again to be with you. Uh, maybe you're on your second cup of coffee now, um, but man, I, I, I am thrilled um, to bring you <clears throat> this message. Uh, we are in our series called It's About Time. So this is the third um, installment, or fourth installment, and we're going we're gonna to finish this out next week for our anniversary service, seven years as a church. Come on, we're having service that day. The weather's got to move on. It's going to get a little bit warmer in the name of Jesus because we're going to celebrate. I want you to be here. I want you to invite somebody, and next week we're going to be talking about it's time to celebrate. Uh, and so that's been the, the, the idea and the thought behind this whole series, is it's about time. It's about time. And it really is, right? At the end of the day, no matter what, it's really about time. That constraint that we all live in, that ticking down of months, hours, decades, years, seconds, milliseconds, and you think that a moment isn't too long until you're um, trying to come up for water, uh, for, for breath when you're underwater, and those, those few seconds sound and feel like eternity, don't they? Um, moments and time, it matters. It's really, it's about time. And, and, and here's the thing, every single person, no matter who you are, we're all constrained by it the exact same way, but here's the paradox of that. We are all given different amounts. We don't know how much we have. We don't know how much is left. And so we have to live like, like it really matters because it, it really, 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 really does. Um, don't you love it? And, and I know that this happens. We got three kids, right? So it happens in my house a whole lot. But don't you love it whenever you're in a hurry and you're ready to go somewhere and, 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 and it's time, you're going to be late. If you don't leave like within a matter of seconds and then you look up and not one person even got their shoes on. One person has still got to take a shower, right? Or how about that friend? You got that friend, you know what, you know what I mean. Whenever you at the set time, time you're supposed to be there and you get the phone call, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the way. I left the house. You know they're still inside their house in their pajamas thinking about leaving. You got that friend. You know who it is, right? I would tell you to tag them below, but don't, don't, don't do that. Um, or here's, here's my favorite, and, and we've all been there. I'm sure it's happened to you uh, this, this past week. You're, you're, you're about second or third back at the red light, it turns green, and you're trying to be gracious. You give it the good 15-second rule. Maybe you got a five-second rule, right? And then you try to give it a little bump on the horn. But it's time to go, right? And then you have to set through a red light because that person, the last second, saw it and rushed through, and then now you're sitting there. Now, I'll be honest. I was If, if, if you were honking at somebody in a white truck this week, it was probably me. Um, I got distracted, and I sat through a whole light. Like, I was that guy. But green means go, right? I mean, it, and, and it's, it's time. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's time to go. It's time to do something. It's time to get, get busy. And it's incredibly frustrating, isn't it? Whenever it's time to go, but you have to wait. And you, you, you have to put things on hold and you know. So I'm in, I, I don't have um, this thing very well called patience. You can ask my, my children. If it's time to go somewhere and I've got to wait, um, it's, it's not a good situation. Uh, we can feel incredibly frustrated. But I think that we feel that in life a lot, don't we? Don't we a lot of times just feel frustrated and sometimes we can feel that sense of frustration and not even honestly know where it comes from. I think so often it comes from the fact that where we're meant to be going and, and the direction that our life is meant to be spent in and the direction that we are going don't line up. And so there, that gap between where we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to be making the most of the time that we're in, and actually where we're at doesn't match up. There's frustration that, that results. There's frustration that comes 
as a result. See, we're going all the time, though, aren't we? Come on, we're always going, 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 going. And some of you, it feels super weird today to just like sit in your living room and just to, to, to kind of breathe and relax a little bit. Because we're always going. But my question is this. We're always going, but are we going somewhere that matters? Is there a life point in the direction of something that's going to mean something at the end of it all? Let me just clarify for you and make something very clear. We all have a mission to live for. Like, and, and my mission is bigger than just me. My purpose has to extend beyond just the person of I. Like, and, and you have a mission as well. And your mission is bigger than just you. And here's the thing. You're not created to just make it through. Like, and sometimes that's like, that's how I just feel like I just make it through the day. But you're not created just to make it through this life. And then at the end, it's the end period. And that's what can feel so frustrating that all we're doing is making it through. You're not created to just make it through. You're created to make a difference, right? And, and, and therein lies so much frustration when you're created for one thing, but you're living another. This time that we have not being spent the way that we're created to leads to lives that are just incredibly frustrating, Right? And nobody wants to be here on this earth for 70 years, 80 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever our allotment is, frustrated with what we've had. Listen, if you've never lived your life bigger than you, if you never live your life bigger than just you, here's, what you're, here's what's going to happen. You're simply always going to be just making it through. Right? You're simply just going to make it through if it's not bigger than than yourself. Here, here's how we normally live, right here. We usually live our lives walking around like this, with a big mirror in front of us. As we go to work, as we talk to our families, as we plan our future, it's a lot like this. Now, you're seeing the back of this. It's not very beautiful. Here's what it looks like. You're seeing my rear on the camera, though, too. There's no good way to do this. We're walking around with a massive mirror in front of our face. And here's what I mean. Always just looking back at ourselves and everything that we do, every step that we take, every direction that we go is always filtered through how does it make me feel? How's it going to affect me? My eyes just on me. But here's the problem. If I'm always looking here, I miss that there's so much more to live my life for. I've got to get my eyes off of just me and onto a greater mission that I'm created for. There's a bigger kingdom than just the kingdom of me and I. But that's really where most of our time investment is placed in just building me a better life and making me happier. But there's so much more. And that's where the real fulfillment of life begins. That's really the secret of life, living bigger than yourself. And when we tap into that, we, we, we then realize it's not just about making it through. Like I can live fulfilled and fulfillment on the other side of making a difference. So I want you to pretend like in your faith, you're sitting at the intersection and there's a green light. And I'm that guy behind you today that's laying on the horn. You're a little annoyed, right? But it's telling you it's time to go, right? It's time to live our lives bigger. It's time to get going. Green means go. It's time to go. It's time to live my life bigger than just me. It's time to live on purpose and make a difference. And so we've been looking at this verse. If you've got your Bibles, you can turn it to Ephesians chapter 5. And so we're going to spend the day really breaking down the scripture. Ephesians chapter 5, we looked at it every single week, but I kind of want to break it down verse by verse and look at the big idea of what Paul's talking about here. Let me read the thing in its entirety. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 through 17 says, wake up sleeper, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Be very grateful, uh, careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. The very first 
line there says, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead. He's like, come on, get up, wake up. Anybody ever um, been like this before? You're, you've had a teacher maybe in school and they just have this really soft voice or this, this it's right after lunch or something. And like, it's just the perfect situation to just nod off. And to go to sleep. I, I was at a church before, and there's this one uh, board member, always sat in the same place, but, but never failed. It, it, at the same time, every Sunday, falling asleep, but not just asleep. I'm talking deep sleep. And I'm talking, it's like snoring. Every single week, we hear him snoring. We know it's almost lunchtime. His wife is like elbowing him to wake up. He is completely asleep. I wonder, like, how many of us, like, I know we're living through life, and we're doing our day-to-day, and we're going to our work, and we're, we're, we're raising the family, like, we're doing the things, but I wonder how many of us have actually nodded off on our purpose. Like, we've fallen asleep on what we're actually meant here to do. We're, 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 we're put here to do. Like, we, we've fallen asleep on it going about our day-to-day, but sleepwalking. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, a few verses before, in the message version, I just I love how this puts it. It says, don't waste your time on useless work near busy work. Doing things for the sake of doing things, there's a difference between being busy and being productive. And so as I look at my life, have I, I know I've been busy, right? I'm doing things, but Have I fallen asleep on maybe like what I'm here to do? Here's here's a great tactic by the enemy. Like if if you don't haven't realized it yet, you need to know that you've got an enemy. His name is the devil, and he would love for you to not fulfill your purpose. And and if he can't get you to completely walk away from God, to sin and just to leave God, he wants to get you super busy. He wants to have, have life around you lull you to sleep by the everyday and make you miss your mission. Miss the fact that there's something bigger to live for. Here, here's here's the, the, the devil's favorite Christian. If he's got a favorite Christian, it's this one. It's an ineffective one. One that doesn't do anything with their faith. Like, don't sleepwalk through life. He says, wake up. Come on, there's something bigger. I get, get up, there's purpose. You got to get up. You got to get up. And it says, then Christ will shine on you. Man, here's what begins to happen in life. If we begin to live on mission, live bigger than ourselves, like the light bulb comes on. Something begins to happen on the inside of us. You begin to understand what it means to live fulfilled. You begin to realize that there is joy even in sorrow. And some of these things that we read in the scripture that can feel so obscure now become reality in our lives because I'm living bigger than me. That This light comes on on the inside of you. When we just continue to hit snooze, on what God wants for our daily lives. Not only, not only do we walk in darkness, not only are, are we walking outside of what God wants, but we're, we're, also, we're also seeing others walk in darkness that's meant to walk in God's light. See, because here's what happened. Christ begins to illuminate our path, but the, the, the light of Christ doesn't just shine on me. The, the light of Christ is meant to shine through me. Like I'm a beacon. I'm a lighthouse for other people to be able to see Jesus. And here's the thing. If I'm not living on mission, then people are missing out on Jesus. People will live in darkness because I'm not doing anything with what God's called me to do. Come on, I'm a torch, I'm a, I'm a light, I'm a spotlight that's meant to point to Jesus. On the, on the daily, I, like, I wonder, what does our life really point to? Like that mirror is kind of pointing back to us. Like think, if, if someone were to hear that we were Christians, would they be totally surprised and shocked? Not just by our morality, but by our mission and what we do. 
Like we make me a good person. But what are we doing with this incredible message that we have on the inside? Matthew chapter 5 says this. It says, you are the light of the world. Come on, you. It's you and me. It said, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? That's crazy talk. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Come on, that's us. We have this, this light burning on the inside of us, but... So often, it's just hidden somewhere beneath the mess. Come on, boy, it's time to go. It's time to live out what we're called to. And I think sometimes we can, just, we can even say things like this. We can see a sad video or infomercial on TV, or we can see things that we don't agree with. And we're like, I wish there was just hope for this dark world. There is. It's you. It's me. Like, like, it's, we're the light of the world. And then it says this, it goes on to say, be careful how you live. Not as unwise, but wise. Be careful, like pay attention to. Man, we got to be, we got to pay attention walking in life like a seven foot NBA player has got to pay attention to walking through a doorway. I guarantee every time they walk through a doorway, like they're, 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 they've trained, they've hit their head enough times where they're watching, Right? We, we got to pay attention in life like, like Shaquille O'Neal getting in a Nissan Altima, <laughs> right? We got to pay attention because the direction of our life, it really matters. We can't just walk through life not thinking about where we're walking or not thinking about where we're living for, or where we're going and hoping we wind up somewhere. No, my life is meant to make a bigger impact than that. I love Andy Stanley. He had this quote. He's a pastor in Georgia, and he says, Hey, anything left to itself becomes about itself. That mirror, without being intentional and without really thinking about it, like we just default back to me. My own wants, my own desires, like everyone does it. We, we, we all do. So we have to be careful not to just focus on me. See, the unwise are the ones who look out only for themselves. Here, Proverbs 18, 1 through 2, it says, unfriendly people care only about themselves. They lash out at, they don't just lash out at people, it says they lash out at common sense. Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions, right? We love those kind of scriptures when we're talking about people, but ooh, I think a lot of times it just describes me. Right? I mean, life is more than just me. Walking wisely isn't just doing the right thing, right? We, we all need to live moral lives and, and, and lay our lives before the cross, but, but it's about how do I live my life with others? It's living bigger than myself, making an impact. And I would argue this, living wisely is being a person who aggressively shares the gospel. Come on, aggressively shares the message and the hope of Jesus. We, we, we've got a message inside of us that everyone needs to hear, but we, 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 we don't share. We've got a light that everyone needs to see because it's so dark out there, but we, we keep it covered. And man, I'm telling you, it's time to open that thing up and get going. The verse goes on to say, make the most out of every opportunity. And this has been our hinge thought and hinge verse for this entire series. Come on, it's about time. It's about time that, that, we, that we look at everything in life and see that, man, I got to make the most of this. I got to do the most with the time that I have. Time is of the essence. But here's what I believe to be true. To make the most of every opportunity requires realizing that every moment is an opportunity. Okay, you're at home. You're distracted. You get the pot roast on the chilies. I'll say it again, Okay. To make the most out of every opportunity, it requires realizing that every moment is an opportunity. Every moment that you have is an opportunity. And what we do with that determines what the, the story our life will tell. I think it's so funny and so crazy at the same time that two people can look at the exact same thing and come with not just two, but multiple different conclusions. 
Like I can be going down the road and see a truck that is rusted out, junked out on the side of the road or a car on the back of a trailer with its wheels off and just look and say, honey, that's amazing. Look at, I mean, that could be the coolest car, the coolest truck. She's like, that thing is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. It just needs to go and get whatever you can across the scales. Like it, it's junk. But in the same regard, she walks into Hobby Lobby and literally sees every opportunity in the world and sees and see, and see just this vast world of things that she could do. Me, I walk into Hobby Lobby and look at my watch the whole time and just wonder why in the world is Christmas already out? Come on. It's like you can look at the same thing and come up with multiple different conclusions. But here's what we've all got to do in life. We all have to look at the life that we live in the moment that we're in and see it not as just a meaningless moment, but a moment of opportunity. Yeah, no, okay, no, not just that. Not just that big thing. Not just that college decision. That moment today, that, that job moment tomorrow, like it's an opportunity. We have the opportunity to look at these things in life and see it as it's just broken. It's messed up. My life is all, it, it's all over. This is the worst thing ever. It's just meaningless. It doesn't matter. Or we can look at these moments in our life, simple moments with our kids, moments in going to work, and see that there's an incredible opportunity in every single moment. When, whenever life goes wrong and I get angry, there's an opportunity for people to be able to see that it's possible to be angry and still honor Jesus. What an opportunity. Whenever it's time to celebrate, come on, there's a way that we can honor God and we can point to Jesus as we celebrate. Some people think that it takes a drink and it takes substance to celebrate well, but we can celebrate and point to Jesus. We, we, in, in our suffering, and when it hurts, when there's real pain that's coming to life, it's an opportunity for people to see what it's like when we cling to Jesus and come out on the other side. When things are good, when things are bad, when I'm with my family, when I'm at work, when I'm with people that I do know and I don't know, every single situation is an opportunity. So making the most of every opportunity is going to be a required um, lens that we put on to see it as this moment is an opportunity. And then it goes on to say, why? Why do we got to see it that way? Because the days are evil. Now we look at people and say they are evil, right? Like that's just, they're just horrible people. But we don't look at people, we, this is, the days are evil. And, and here's a couple of meanings as you look into the scripture and as you see what that means. And it, it, it's, the days are evil, one, because Men, the things that God are against are now what everyone in our world is for. And there's, there's evil days. But I think the second meaning of this is even more powerful. The, the, the days are evil is an allusion to the end times. And saying that we are living in a day that's coming to an end. So people have asked me, you know, every time there's an administration turnover or whenever the corona hits or these massive things as a pastor, the number one question that I get is, Pastor, is it the end times? And every time my answer is, yep, absolutely. Like, how long do we got? No clue. I ain't got to You could have 3,000 years. You could have 30 days. I don't know. But see, the scripture makes clear that we're caught up in a moment. And it's a moment between the resurrection of Jesus whenever he went to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit, and his return. Any time between that moment is the end times. We're in the end times. Now, I don't know whenever it's all coming to an end, but baby, every day I want to live like it's the last and bring as many people with me to my destination of heaven. Let's live like we're the workers of heaven on the earth because we are. And let's live like our mission is to make heaven bigger and to make hell smaller because it is. We have to live in that way. Not seeing people as my enemy, but people are my mission. When's it going to happen? I don't know, but we're living in a day and in a time where it's going to end. Let's, let's be the light 
Let's bring as many people with us as we can. Here's where it goes on to say this. Don't be foolish. It says, but understand what the Lord's will is. Like, don't waste your life. Don't be, don't be doing those things that don't matter. Don't be caught up in a life that's at the end. You're kind of even ashamed to tell your grandkids about. Don't be caught up in a, in a, in a life that you have to look back and wonder what you lived for. Like, instead, let's understand what God's will is. What is the Lord's will? And so we can get caught up in this and people are like, I just want to know God's will. God, what is your will? And what do we normally mean? We mean like, God, where do you want me to go eat breakfast? Okay. Where do you want me to go to college? Should I go left or should I go right? We want to know very specific things for our lives. What is God's will? But I think so often we're looking at God's will as some mysterious thing that God will never reveal to us. But can I tell you, God's already revealed his will and his word. Yeah, there are specific things in your life that we're going to work out. He's going to show us, but he says, don't be foolish and throw your life away, but know what the Lord's will is. You know what that means? Understand what God wants and live it out. So what's God's will? Dramatic pause. It's people. Like God's will is people. That's it. So, so here's God's command, okay? It's to, to love God and love people. Because they, they, they were asked, Jesus was asked, what's, what's the greatest command? Wrap them all up. He said, oh, the greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it, to, to love others, to love people. But here's God's will. God's command is to love God and others. God's will is that people would know him. That's God's will. You want to set your direction in the your life in the direction of God's will? Then we help people to know Him. That's His will. How do we know? First Timothy 2 4 says, This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants, desires, whose will is all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. No, but I want to know where, like, where I should. No, we need to, this is God's will. Let's, look at, let's, let's put our life's direction in the will of God. And you want to know the other will and, and where he wants you to go? He'll reveal that as you're walking out, the, the will he's already told you. His will is people. In, in, in cells, there's this thing called a, a CTA. I don't know if you might, if, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it another little dramatic pause so you can type down below if you know what CTA means. Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Call to action. And here's the thing. You can get on the greatest sales call ever, but you never give any next steps on what they're supposed to do. You never make any money, right? So, so sales is like, okay, you've got to give them a clear call to action and, 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 and tell them what to do. Well, Ephesians 5, this right here for Paul is the, is the CTA, this is the call to action. This is the, hey, believers, get off that booty and get busy. Like the light green, let's go. It's time to do something. Make the most of every opportunity. Let's get going. Know what the Lord's will is and pour your life into it. The church is not some building. Listen, we're not here this morning. You're in your, your, your bedroom. You're in your living room. Uh, you, you're in where, various places. We're not in the building. The church is never meant to be. It's not a building that we, that we meet in and feel good and go and not do anything. The, the church is a group of people meant to change the world. That's our mission. And so just three things real quick as we wrap this up and put some practical handles on this thought. It's time. Come on, it's time. It's time the church rise up. It's time the church make a difference. Come on, if we don't do it, who's going to? The, the, the gospel being shared around the world, the good news about what Jesus has done, if it's going to be shared, it's going to be done by us. Stop waiting for somebody else. It's time. Here, here we go. It's time to live like eternity is real. There's more to life than just what's in front of us every day. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says this. Things that are seen don't last forever, but, the, but things that are not seen are eternal. 
That's why we keep our minds on the things that cannot be seen. Eternity is real. Heaven and hell are realities. It's reality. There's going to be a, a final moment in this physical life for every single person. And there's one or two places. There's going to be an eternal destination of heaven or hell. Hell being eternal separation from a God who loves us and created us. And we're the workers that help people make the choice today and here where that there will be. The change is all up to God, but we're the ones who share the message, shine the light. And so if we're living like eternity is real, then we got to realize that earthly direction has eternal consequences. And I want my life to be pointed in a direction that's making a difference in people's life. Come on, like the Matrix. Anybody ever watched 90s Matrix? And you ever tried to do the whole thing like this? Yeah, man, I used to love the Matrix. There's like another world beneath the world. That's more real, I think, than what we realize. Come on, there's something bigger and there's something deeper for me to live for than just Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, getting to the weekend, getting this done, making it through. Heaven is reality. Eternity is real. How often do we as believers, I, I, I want to just challenge you with this thought. How often do we as believers say that we believe in heaven, but we live like eternity doesn't matter? We believe in heaven, but our daily life may be reflect that we don't truly believe there's an eternity. I, I, I just, I want my life to live like it matters. If heaven is real, if heaven is real, come to that conclusion yourself. I say that it is based on what God says. If heaven is real in the gospel, the good news about Jesus has to be our highest priority. It has to be good news that heaven is waiting if you choose it. Come on, C.S. Lewis said this. It's since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they've become so ineffective in this. He said this, aim at heaven and you get earth thrown in. Aim at earth and you'll get neither. I think that's us so much, right? We aim at so many things and miss the target. Let's live for what matters. Second one, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time to go. The light's green. It's, it's time to realize that people matter. If eternity is real, if heaven and hell are realities, then that has to mean that people really matter. Like the person that you look at in the eyes, whoever they are, the person at the grocery store, the person who you really know, the person who, that you, who you don't, they matter. Every person that we see, every person that we encounter matters to God. And they will spend eternity somewhere. Every person's eyes that we look into is a person that God loves them. And too long the church has been defined by what we're against. And I think it's time that we rise up for what we're for. That we're for people. That we love people. And we break some, down some divides and just meet people where they're at. And we can never bring them to Jesus unless we meet them where they're at. Come on, let's love some people. People matter. And here's the thing, whether it's your family or, you know, we can't say, oh, my family knows I love them. People need to know that they matter. Take time for others. Love, serve. And let me even say this. Be willing to be a little uncomfortable to love people. Be willing for it to affect your comfort zone for you to make a difference for the kingdom. Here's the last thing is I just challenge you. It's time. It's time. It's time to get going. Did you know in sports, there are people who are paid up to a million dollars to just suit up and sit down. That's what I'm talking about. I want to sign up for that team, right? I just, I just, I'm like third string something. Give me like 600,000 a year and I'll just, I'll just sit there. Like, suit up and sit down and never do anything. But you know what? There's no such thing as a bench warmer believer. 
Like it doesn't exist. There's no, no, no category if you read the New Testament as a believer who doesn't make a difference for the kingdom of God. Like we have a mission. And here's what it is. As, as, as we really put some action steps to this. Matthew 28, Jesus said this. He said, therefore, in light of all of this, in light, this is before Jesus ascends to heaven and he's leaving for the, for the last time on earth. They're not going to see him in this physical body again. And therefore, everything that's happened. I love this little two-letter word. What does he say? Go. Therefore, go. Don't sit on your hands. Don't just go have church. I, I love our building, but don't just go build fancy buildings. Go. Go make a difference. Make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Hey, you know what I've told you guys? Go teach others because they need this hope. They need this joy. They need this purpose that you have. And guess who they're going to hear about it? You. And surely I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. You ain't got to be a preacher. You got a mission and a purpose. You don't have to have it all together. How can I tell somebody about Jesus? I'm still messed up. Man, we all messed up. You don't have to have all the answers right where you are, right with what you have in the, in the place that you are. Live to make a difference because we have a mission to live. The light's green. I'm behind you going, beep. It's time to go. It's time to go. Here's the thing. There's a dark world out there. People's eternity is in the balance. Heaven and hell are realities. We're the difference. We're the difference. If we don't do it, who will? So I'm going to live my life like this time. This time matters. It's, it's time for the church to rise up. So this week, I want you to do two things. I want you to simply, one, be aware. Be aware that every moment you're in is an opportunity to shine to Jesus. Look at your life through the moments of opportunity and say, how can I show Jesus in this moment. People are looking, people are watching. Maybe it's things you say. Maybe it's, it may be a message you preach and telling them all about Jesus. It might be just the life that you live and how you react in a moment. But it's an opportunity for you to spotlight on the Savior. And then here's the second one. This is a prayer that I've tried to have for the last few years. Every day, just pray a simple prayer. God, put somebody in my path today. Put one person that I can make a difference. One person. God, show me somebody today that I can make a difference in their life. Eternity is real. People matter. It's time to go. The light, I mean, it's blaring green. You are not created to just make it through. And if that's what you're doing, that's why you're frustrated. You're created to make a difference. Let's get a little uncomfortable as we love people, as we care about people. It's time, it's time, it's time. Let's make a difference. I want to pray for you. And I pray that this week would be the week that we begin to make a difference like, like never before. That the church would rise up and we quit looking to governments and institutions and policies to make a difference. And we realize there's a light burning on the inside and we're going to take the cover off and let it shine. Let's make a difference. Father, I just, God, I just thank you for the opportunity to be your hands and your feet, to be the person that's called to make a difference in this world. And God, we realize the weight of the fact that the kingdom of God moving on this earth is on my shoulders. Because it's my mission. We're the light of the world. We will not hide it anymore. God, that light, it's green. And it's time to go. 
So God, we pour our lives into serving you. We no longer just look at our lives as meaningless moments, but as opportunities. God, how can it make a difference for your kingdom? That truly is not just the key to fulfillment for somebody else's life, but also for mine. God, would you this week, every day, help us to see opportunity, put somebody in our path that we can make a difference. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.